Nine years ago I made a video about the so-called Videleer tone control. I found it in the radio bulletin of 1953 and it is quite an interesting way of say making a tone control for the normal audio band. Of course in those days it was made with tubes and tubes have some very good properties especially <coughs> when it comes to um, the impedance on the grid say the resistance on the grid uh, to drive a tube and that is more or less en <coughs> sorry, endless so very high you can compare it to a field effect transistor in a certain way no, not completely but anyway um, I want to play at first perhaps this video is about a tone control invented and issued by Mr. Videleer in the Netherlands. He invented this uh, tone control during World War II and published it, published it in 1947. And even now in 2016 his conclusions are very very important when you have to do with audio. So I will, when you want. I will stop this video now uh, because I want to demonstrate <coughs> how I um, re realize this not with tubes but with transistors anyway. So I have to skip to the, to the schematic that can take some time. Here you see uh, the ideas of Mr. Videleer. Uh, here we have say the standard audio control uh, lifting up the high frequencies and uh, uh, pushing them down of course also and lifting up the low frequencies etc etc. When you know a little bit about uh, audio tech this will be for you a common um, common graphic. And I want to go now to the to another yes, this is the schematic what he that he made. I hope to get it somewhat better in yes here. Now I want to here is the schematic the complete schematic and I can advise you when you are interested to uh, go to that video, that very old video, um, and to make it, here is the, the, say the input tube that amplifies the audio signal, and when you study this circuit in a certain way, uh, you see that he has used uh, two switches, in combination with a series of resistors they have certain values and they are matched with the, uh, the, the, the tone control that he wanted to make and it is combined with two coils one of 250 milli henry and the other one of 28 henry well that's a very high value by the way but anyway um, <coughs> And here is say the output. So here's the tube amplifier from the end node. We have an amplification and I've made it now with a transistor. We'll demonstrate it. But when you look closely uh, you could also say use in case of uh, that complicated switch that he used. Uh, he, he also made it in such a way that it was exactly matched with the decibels. I'm not doing that in my schematic anyway. But you can also use here two potentiometers. When you look closely at this circuit. And here is my circuit now. <coughs> um, made with transistors. And in fact we have the same, in a kind of way, the same situation. 
Uh, here is the amplifier. It's now a transistor amplifier, standard transistor amplifier. And here we don't have that switch with all these positions, but we only have here two potentiometers and exactly the same coil that he also used in this schematic. And here a coil one and coil two. And of course it is in a certain way difficult to find these coils, uh, but I have used, and I will demonstrate that, in these coils, and they are from made from transformers, 230 30 volts transformers, and I have used the secondary windings. It's a little bit too much light here, but I will give a better demo. Um, here is the schematic in reality. Uh, you see here the two uh, potentiometers to influence the sound. Here is the coil one and here is the coil two and you can surely see that it, they are uh, uh, power supply coils made for 230 volts but they are now used as inductors in this audio filter. In fact it is an audio filter. So here the schematic again and then let's listen. I've used here a switch in the original schematic that he used a 1N5 capacitor, 1500 picofarad, but I've made this in such a way that I had, say, the maximum, maximum influence on the sound. But, um, of course, or perhaps it does not match exactly with all the curves in the uh, original schematic, in the original article. Um, of the 1940s, 1950s, but anyway. Good idea is, by the way, uh, to when you want to make it in real, uh, put it in a metal box, a steel box, because the coils here have a high inductance and they can pick up hum. So let's listen. What can it bring? Um, well, put in this, the module here. And here's the music. In Albany, New York. So let me demonstrate the effects of tuning here the two potentiometers. We have another sound characteristic now. Turn it back. Turn this. Turn this. And um, uh, you can surely hear, and also when you make it, that the ID of the fiddler control is very properly made because when I put these two uh, potentiometers in the middle position, there's really a kind of middle sound. Uh, that sounds strange, of course, what I tell, but. Um, Perhaps I can demonstrate it now again. This is by the way the wave. And now I turn it to the right. More bass. 
Turn it to the left, less bass. Turn it to the to the high frequency potentiometer to the left. The sound changes and here it changes too. So um This is uh, second uh, copyright free music. I take the the uh, the stick out. I play it again. And again the schematic. So I think I've told everything that was important. Here again the information about the transformers that you can use and the best effect was with the uh, 10N capacitor here and I have also switched in series to uh, high inductance coils, 25 Henry and 14 Henry, but that did not differ so much. Anyway, you can try. Turn again. So, that was uh, everything to tell. Of course, I can. Uh, do a big search. I don't do that. I don't have, say, the special uh, measurement devices to say uh, in a certain way search all the audio bands out, uh, say from 0 to 100 hertz, 100 to 1000 hertz, 1000 to 4000, etc. etc. I don't do that, and um, it is say. Uh, uh, a listening experiment but it's uh, surely a good working circuit thanks for watching schematic again and the transformers again they are in general transformers that give out in the order of 24 volts up to 30 volts with a low very low milliampere range out and their um, DC resistance of the coil is in the order between say 80 ohms and 380 ohms and of course you can switch cars in series the total inductance you can simply add it. So 10 Henry here, 10 Henry here, a total inductance is 20 Henry. Again, thanks for watching.